Hi everyone, this is Shane with Omni Technologies. Today we're going to be talking about how to create and modify access levels within Linnell OnGuard. We're going to be using the system administration application within the OnGuard suite to do this. I've already gotten logged in, but before we go ahead and get started, let's just ask the question, what is an access level? You know, I like to think of an access level kind of like a digital key. It really determines where a person can go and during what times. As simple as definition, an access level is a grouping of readers in time zones, and then that gets assigned to a specific person or card holder within the software. So to get started, we're going to go ahead and go up to the access control menu, and we're going to go down, not quite halfway, to access levels. As you can see, we've already got a handful in our system, uh, but we're going to go ahead and start by creating a new one. So I'm going to go down to the Add button on the lower left corner. I'm going to click that, and it's going to take me into edit mode, and it's going to first ask me to give it a name. I'm going to just call it Test Access Level with today's date. And like I said, it's, uh, it's really a collection of readers in time zones. So in order to make an assignment, this right side of the screen here, this is my reader assignments. Cur currently my access level is, is clearly blank. So in order to make my first assignment, I have to select at least one of each. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and select a, a reader, a spare one I've got for testing. And I'm going to give it a test time zone that I've previously created. I think it goes without saying that if you require the use of a special time zone, or a new time zone rather, then you should create that first before you come into the access level section. Um, I've now selected two things, one of each, and you can select multiple readers. You can only select one time zone at a time. If you do select multiple readers, when you assign them, just keep in mind they're going to have the same time zone association. So if you require a different time zone for a certain reader, you have to make those assignments separately. And once I select at least one from each window, my right facing arrow that says assign reader time zone pair will become active. So I can click that and make the assignment. Before I do that, I wanted to point out one other kind of useful function. When you're uh, clicking in the reader section, you can actually right click and you can, it gives you a few options. You can clear. It'll clear whatever one you selected. You can select all. You can choose select item if the one you clicked isn't selected. You can clear all. Some bulk, bulk functions there. If you wanted to do them all real quick, it's just a quick way to select them all. And then if I click the right facing arrow to assign them, it will assign them all with that time zone. Again, if I made a mistake, actually maybe I wanted that on a different time zone, I can do the reverse and I can select it over here and click the left facing arrow and that'll pull it out. Now I could come back and I could clear these and maybe I just wanted to um, you know, assign my spare reader with a different time zone. So now I could do that. There are these handy uh, search fields if you're on a newer version of OnGuard. So on larger systems where you have a lot of readers and you know, access panels. You can use any of these search fields to make your life a little easier. Same with time zones on the bottom. Um, but I have now, you know, selected the bare minimum to have an access level. I've selected readers, time zones, I've made the assignments, so I could save it now at this point. But I want to show you what's available in this user tab as well. Uh, two commonly used features would be first card unlock and double card authority. If you have readers configured to use those um, settings in the software, then those both require, you know, in order for that function to work, you have to have card holders with that authority. If, if you have a card reader that's in first card unlock mode, that's where the reader is on a schedule, but when first card unlock is enabled, it's not going to immediately unlock or change mode to whatever you have selected. It's going to wait for a person with first card unlock authority to scan through that reader after the first interval has started. So you would have to have 
people with this um, command enabled on their access level in order for that to work. Same for double card authority. If you have a card reader that's set up to utilize double card mode, then you would need people with this command enabled on their access level and assigned to them. Uh, we're not going to use those in this example. We're just doing a real basic application here. So we've now given reader assignments and we're going to go ahead and click OK. It is now saved. And, you know, it goes without saying if I've saved it and made, I need to make a change, then I can go back to it, click modify, and, you know, maybe I want to pull a couple of readers out of there, actually. You can select those, click the left facing arrow to pull them out, and now I can save it. And when you make a change to an existing one, it does give you a warning. It's just saying, hey, be aware, this is going to affect all card holders that have this access level. And yes, we know that. So we're going to click OK. You can also use the delete button if you're if you desire to remove one from the system and you can click the help menu uh, you can also use the F1 button to use help at any point and it would launch the help interactively to wherever you are in the software but we have now created our test access level so if we wanted to that's now available for assignment to a card holder to do that I'm going to go to administration card holders and I'm just going to assign that to my test person for our demonstration purposes. When you go to get your cardholder record pulled up, you need to go to the Access Levels tab. And currently, I have nothing assigned. So I'm now going to click Modify. And I can select that level or any access level that I've created. And you, same thing applies here. In order for it to be selected, you have to check, you know, click on it on the little icon. You got to see that red check mark, or it's not gonna, it's not gonna actually be selected. If you selected it properly, down in the right corner below that window, it's gonna tell you how many levels you've assigned. If you can't remember what's in the access level, uh, they have a handy feature you can do by right clicking on it, and you can select level definition. It will show you the controller, the reader name, and the time zone that are part of that level definition. So that's quite handy. Um, it's a lot handier than going back and forth between multiple windows. So at this point, I could click OK, and it will assign that access level permanently. One other handy feature, though, uh, let's say you have a situation where you want to only assign that access level for a temporary basis. Um, once you have it assigned, you can actually set activate and deactivate dates. Uh, once it's again, once it's selected already, you can hit this activate dates button up on the top, or you can right click on it and also select activate dates. That will pull up this window uh, where you can choose the activate and deactivate dates uh, in a Windows calendar. So let's say I wanted it just for next week. I could select Monday for my activate, and I could set a time if I require that. Otherwise, midnight is the default. And then I could choose Friday or whatever date for my example. And then hit OK. And it's going to save that. It'll show that in your Activate and Deactivate column. Once you're done, you can hit OK. And it will save that to the cardholder record. And at this point, we have created an access level. And we have assigned it to a person. And um, that's all we were going to do in this video. So I hope that this has been helpful for you. Thank you for watching and have a good day.